but you know, so you'll be able to tell the difference between Arabic and cursive. So, so this was one letter that was kind of interesting because the way I learned to write it, really it kind of looks exactly like the letter, just rounded. Because remember cursive, it's supposed to flow. It's supposed to be easy to write. It's not supposed to be laborious. So it almost looks like a top, okay? But the thing is, even my Israeli friends, uh, on Wednesday night we would do uh, Israeli dancing and then we had a board and if we wanted a certain song, we'd write the song on the board and they of course all wrote in cursive, right? So they're, they, they like, <laughs> they make it like really fancy. So this is one that, it's, they just like to do it fancy. So sort of like, I love to do the L's, you know, the English L's in cursive because they're so pretty. So anyway, it's basically just like that. It's top. Now, top is interesting uh, in that you see here in the book, there's one with a dogish and one without a dogish. Now, in both Biblical and conversational Hebrew, there's no difference in pronunciation. It's still a what sound. What sound is this going to be? T. So it's going to be a T sound. So when you're transliterating it, it's just a T. Okay? Um, but it's it's called a Begit Kephet letter. You don't have to remember that. So in the Begit Kephet letters, they have dog issues. But it's not going to make a bit of difference for us. Okay? But there is one thing that I kind of always wondered this myself. When you see a um, uh, house of worship, a synagogue, and you see the word Beth, has anybody seen Beth? Like Beth Torah. Mm -hmm. You ever gone by a synagogue and it says Beth Torah? They transliterated the ending T as a TH because it did not have a dogish. Because remember, the dogish makes uh, either a T or a T. Okay? But it doesn't do that anymore. But they still transliterate it. So it's really Beit Torah with a T. But they transliterate it with a TH. That's just, just so you'll know, like, I always wonder, why do they put B-E-T-H when it's just really B-E-T? Okay? Uh, because of the dogish. But in this case, it's going to mean absolutely nothing to us. Just, even when you transliterate it, don't even worry about that. Because all we're doing now is we're learning how to what? Read it. Just learning how to read it. Okay. Have I thoroughly confused you? Hopefully not. Is there ever a dogish in cursive? No. 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 Um, On this letter, I mean. I have not seen it, but I haven't really been aware of it. I would say, of course, there would have to be like in the back of the vet. The ones that change the sound, yes, you would have right. Right. a dog. On this letter, there's no dispute. No, no, okay. no. Um, I'll have to look. If you decide, and one of the reasons I do teach cursive to my classes is because if you decided to take a class from like Hebrew University, which I did, a conversational class, the teachers all write in cursive. So, you know, you'll be doing something and the teacher says, let me show you this, and then they start writing in cursive. So you're going to be really lost <laughs> if you don't know how to at least read cursive. So um, I do it because I don't know where you're going to decide to go when you're finished with the foundation. Because after you're done with my class, you can either do biblical or you can do conversational. Either, you should be able to do either one. All right, so let's look at page 18. <coughs> let's see, let's start with Randy. Let's just do line two, because. Okay, 
Te. Okay, good. Next. Te Ta. Ta Ta. Ta Te. Shabbat. Shabbat. Okay, look. Shabbat. 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 You can all write now. You can all write Shabbat. 
So, and when you learn the rules, the rules say that the tom will never have a doggish at the end. If it's at the end of a sentence, it'll never have a doggish. And you, you can see that here. Look at all the tobs at the end. None of them have a doggish. Because the rule is you don't have a doggish at the end. So, but we don't really know, need to know those rules. Because <laughs> um, there's a lot of rules. And what's funny is, okay, if you're teaching someone English, you know, we, there's a lot of rules in English. Mm -hmm. We don't know them all, right? We don't know all the English rules. We just say, well, this is how you pronounce it. Pronounce it. Well, Israelis are kind of the same way. If you go to an Israeli and you say, hey, why is this pronounced this way and this one's pronounced this way? And they'll go, I don't know, just pronounce it that way. They don't always know all the rules either. So the rules aren't as important right now as just learning how to say the word. So, all right. Let's go to page, oh, that's it. So, before we do any practice and stuff, I want to do a little bit of conversation. We didn't get to the conversation last week, so I wanted to do that. All right, who can introduce themselves? Ani, Lori. Ani, okay. Ani, Sue, and then how do you say, what if I wanted to ask him, who are you? Mia Ta, what about her? Mia. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to add a little bit to the conversation. So if I'm introducing myself, I'll say, hi, I'm, you know, I'm Sue. Who are you? What would you say next? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Right? So. Naim Mio. Naim Mio, that's right. Na Im. Mayo. So this is very, Mayo is very, Naim is nice. So you're basically saying very nice. And in Hebrew, a lot of times, a lot of things are just assumed to meet you. <laughs> Do you have extra ones of those? I might. Do you not have one? Okay. I'll have to look in my book. So we're going to go around the table. We're going to say, Anisu, Mieta. Okay, Randy. So you would say, uh, Randy, and I would say, Naimil. So now you ask, you tell your name and ask him what his name Ani, Randy, Mieta. Now you say, Nice to meet me. Oh, yeah. Naimil. That's right. Okay. 
Anit Fred? Okay, Anit Fred. And now you guys say to each other, Naim Mayor. Naim Mayor. Okay, now ask her. Or right, tell her your name. Uh, Mita. No. Anit. 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 Fred. Fred. Yeah. Federico. Now ask, who are you? Uh, Oh yeah, Mia Ta. Mia. Mia. Because it's masculine and feminine. Yes, yes. Ami if Naing Meor. Okay. Then the bottom, the first column there, 
I do want you to transliterate it. Bebe. Mm -hmm. So the first okay. one is bebe. 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 I know. Bebe. Yeah, remember, <laughs> right now, for the most part. Hello, bebe. Hello, bebe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right now, for the most part, the second syllable is emphasized. So uh, there's going to be a rule here pretty soon, but we haven't gotten to that vowel yet. Uh, when we get to that vowel, then I'll tell you the rule. We don't need it right now. It's just mainly, if you can, it's the second syllable. Unless, of course, there's only what? One syllable. Um, and when there's uh, two syllables, it's still the second one, Barad. All right, anybody have any questions? Oh, uh, we can keep these, right? Oh, yeah, I know, those are yours. If you want more, I got more. Do you think you want to okay, do it more than that? Do you want to go ahead and turn that off? No questions? Do I press finish? Yes. 